everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Dragonair Silent Gods. For today's video, I'm here on day 13 of season 3, and I want to do a showcase of my domain teams. Dive deep battle peak into season 3 of Dragonair Silent Gods. We have a lot of new heroes, new synergies, new bosses to fight, and I'm looking forward to exploring more this season. Be sure to download via Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games if you haven't already, and use the current working promo codes. There's lots of events happening now and coming up. I'm looking forward to seeing what this season brings. And going on now through April 10th, we have an Easter egg celebration event. Here, you'll be able to collect Easter eggs to exchange for some really great rewards. You'll have daily tasks which will earn Easter eggs, you can also gift your friends and they can do so in return to fulfill the ones you're missing for your set of eggs. You can also craft eggs if you find yourself getting a lot of a certain type to get the ones you're missing. We have many days of this event, so don't worry too much about crafting right away. You can earn great rewards with each set of eggs that you collect, like Apprentice Scrolls, Scholar Scrolls, Worm Morrow, Starlight Die, Heliolite Die, and a ton of gold and even a super cute emo. Oh, and don't forget to click the bunny for some secret eggs. All right, so uh, we have all of the dungeons and domains open now, so I figured this would be a good time for me to make some videos showing what my teams were before I make them super OP as I add in ancient battlefield art of uh, runes, I mean. I don't want to add those in to what I'm already using. I kind of want to show you guys what I used at the bare minimum. Now, this video is not going to be a free-to-play friendly guide. I am going to use legendary heroes. I am going to use legendary artifacts. But for one, it's season three. We got to pretend <laughs> or stop pretending. Those don't exist. But for two, I think it's good to show you guys what I'm really using in the early stages of a season. So if you're on season one, you're on season two, or yeah, you're on season three like me, you can see... Which heroes are actually worth investing in? Or you can see which legendary artifacts are actually worth buying. What are people really using? So I kind of think that's an important thing as well. Instead of just trying to pretend that nobody has a legendary artifact by the time they get to season three, which is not realistic. It's possible if you played lightly, but or it had really bad luck. But by now, most people should have at least a witch's remains. Uh, hopefully more, but hey, you know, it is RNG at the end of the day. But yeah, I want to show my teams. So they always change each season, the domains and the um, dungeons. So this video is going to be my three domains. I'm going to show you guys who I'm using to clear them. And yeah, we'll show the clears. Then we'll quickly talk about what the boss is doing. So first we'll go to the easy one. We'll start with a frost domain although of course they make everything harder if you look on the low level stuff it actually shows you what you should use like by round and then boom the boss dispelling of shield control immunity block buff or debuffs or dispelling of debuffs right simple enough and that is because the boss um brings some let's see here we go entangled is a control effect that we we can block, but the attack penalty is pretty rough. You don't want attack penalty to get on you um, and destroy your damage, but I kind of think you can do without. Depending on your team, you don't really need to worry about that. But there are two w waves here where the boss places attack penalty on you, so that's going to dramatically kill your damage and slow down your run. So keep that in mind. Uh, the boss also puts up a shield. So having someone that can dispel shields is really valuable for this. All right, let's go into stage five here. So obviously with when it comes to poison and ice heroes, they are going to do less damage and they're going to take more damage. So we're going to try to avoid those. But even if you have a tank that is really, really good or a healer, like even Hexandra can probably still be your healer even through stage five. For, for most of these, you can get away with using a support hero. Uh, they just might be squishier. They might die because they take 90% more damage than they normally would. So let's go ahead in here, though. So what I'm using for the Frost Domain is actually my Curse Team. So let me bring in the Curse Team. So let me load equipment. 
And this team here is... Honestly, Victor is kind of the MVP for a lot of things. Ancient Battlefield, Grave of Curse, and Frost Domain. He dispels shields. He dispels buffs. He changes buffs to other debuffs. He's got a really cool kit. So I think he's a little bit of an underrated Season 3 support hero. Obviously, Cinerelle kind of shines big. But if you don't have a Cinerelle... <laughs> Obviously, you can use a different healer. That's kind of his main job here. But yeah, this is a team full of support heroes and no real DPS. So this is kind of fun for Curse. Uh, you could I was using Ardreth instead, usually, uh, for my team as well. So that's actually, yeah, that's the case here. So I was almost using my Curse team, but Ardreth instead of Garius. So I do have Ardreth. In the Hugo's Blast Jar, just to give a little bit of extra damage based on her defense. And I did get lucky enough to get uh, this Tundra set, which is really good for a tank. The reduction of damage in PvE, it's so good. So this is kind of what I'm using. Uh, Cinerelle is in the Organ Pipe, but if you have trouble with survivability, you can give him something even more to boost his healing. But this helps everyone do more damage, and his heals are based on attack, so that's why we have that. We have Elminster here, also in purple gear, and honestly, I should probably upgrade that rune, but hey, it works, I'm gonna leave it. I've been using Elminster with the Hourglass instead of his artifact because it actually allows you to come to this battle skill as fast as possible to help keep people alive with that shield that's gonna pop very fast. So that's why he's in the Hourglass uh, for a lot of my content right now, but I could totally put him in the other thing. Plus, it's really hard to get the accuracy early on uh that's that's one of the biggest struggles i would say but yeah i'm gonna leave the enlightenment aura let me just run this i'm gonna ignore the fact that nobody has runes even though we can for the new rune that we unlocked today but you don't need op heroes to pass the frost domain frost domain is definitely the easiest and you can even farm it with the heroes you have that are like your actual frost heroes. But I would definitely suggest throwing in a DPS that is the opposite affinity, at least, as your main DPS. Even if you can get by with mostly frost and poison heroes because the frost domain isn't that hard, uh, you still kind of want to do that. So I think the biggest thing with this is really the shield. But it's not too bad with someone like. Uh, Victor here. All right, at the boss now. So the boss's skills, immune to control effects. If the monster has no debuffs, the debuffs and control inflicted will ignore the target's resistance. So you want debuffs on this boss. Simple enough, right? And then we have the attack penalty that gets placed, the shield that goes up, and the attack penalty that gets placed. So... You don't need a team full of legendaries to beat this, that's for sure, but it's who I have built. So this is early days. I am very early on this account, and I think that's the kind of the reason I want to show do some team showcases is because it's so early, and I think just showing what I'm working with early on is important to help people have an idea of who's worthy um, legendary-wise as well. The timing, of course, it is a battle skill to dispel the shield, so it's kind of random, but very easy to clear. No effort. I could throw in anybody else. We don't need all this craziness. But hey, I wanted to start with showing all of the domains, so even though Frost Domain is not one people normally need help with, I did want to point out that if you're if you're really slow with your runs, try to bring in a cleanser or debuff preventer because that can make a big difference when you have attack penalty you're not going to do as much damage so this is pretty slow for an op team that's full of legendaries but look at i have no no dps everyone is kind of equal with their damage it's like a support team and it gets by and i love that i can just kind of throw together my supports to get through this domain and not have to build extra people just specially for this one so keep that in mind too. You got to be really efficient early on. All right, and lineup recommendations for ice or frost domain here. Obviously, it's kind of going to be people just using who they have built 
because this one's pretty easy overall. You just gotta smash your way through it. Although, again, a shield remover or preventer is really helpful. It certainly doesn't hurt. But you can just smash using a team of another affinity, whatever you're working on for Vortex, or, or maybe your uh, goblin team even. You see people with burn here. Let's take a look at the non-legendary lineup. You see Gulend, or sorry, Zarloth, Adolphus again. He's in a lot of these. Uh, Yola is a perfect example of bringing in a crowd control. But she's not going to be good for Tempest Domain. But she's still really good to bring in the attack penalty. Uh, yeah. Shook is a shield dispeller, so that's why he's here. Whereas it dispels shields with the ultimate here. So that's why he's part of this. But yeah, you can use so many different options for Frost Domain because it is a little bit more um, easy to smash through. And keep in mind, like, you don't necessarily need the top tier options, like, for dispelling a shield. You don't need a legendary like Victor. You can certainly use someone else like Shook if you feel that role is really needed for the success of your run. All right, and the Tempest Domain gets a little bit harder. They did adjust some things here. So when it comes to, if you go on number one, again, you can see the recommendations. So healing reversal, healing reduction. So healing prohibition type stuff. So, you know, like Sigrid is going to be a queen here like she always is. But the problem is, um, some, well, not for this one, luckily. But in season two, Sigrid was actually the wrong element because lightning and poison were together. But hey, season three, we, we're back and we could properly use Sigrid. All right, so um, the passive here, each stack of a buff increases all damage dealt, immune to control effects, and then puts heal over time. So buff prevention or stripping of buff, buff dispelling is a great one for this boss as well. We don't want him to have recovery over time. Um, again, here as well. And then, and this is the quirky part. Bone Dragon soars to the sky, calling baby dragons for help, dealing lightning damage to all enemies, and killing the baby dragon at the same time. For each baby dragon kill, that gains one stack of recovery over time. The current damage dealt by this skill will be increased by 30% in the meanwhile. So, you... Obviously want to kill the baby dragons, but early on the beginning stages, you can kind of ignore them, I found, if you have enough damage in your team. But once you get to stage 5, I feel like you can't really ignore this mechanic. At least this early on when our gear is not that OP yet. <laughs> so the baby dragon has three stacks of damage reduction in the beginning. Once the stack, one stack of this state will be removed and 35% of HP will be lost every time it's inflicted with control. So I actually brought in a little bit of a fun budget option for this. And uh, yeah, I, I um was happy to use someone a little different. So here's my team. As you can see, I'm bringing in Goongum, as I call him. He has control here. He has a stun and an AoE there. He is blind with his battle skill. So he's bringing lots of control. Uh, this is a really fun little team. And I thought he would be a perfect addition. So obviously this season, my synergy I'm going with is Fire and Radiance for most of my key heroes. But Sigrid is coming in here to be the healing prohibition hero. She is so perfect for it. So let me first load in the gear. Again, he's only level 73. He was not maxed. Nobody has the extra runes. I haven't even changed the runes to be the best ones possible. Uh, let me go ahead here and go on Tempest. No skill timing, just like with the Frost Domain. I didn't even bother with. And here are what we're using. All epic gear. I, this one is not me changing. I haven't changed to put the better gear on our Dreth yet. So as you can see, it was still all epic gear. Lower to epic or rare runes and some really good artifacts. But I kind of think these are four of the best artifacts you could choose from. So I think I really like the fact that I'm showcasing this right now. The horn as well, but that's more for, I did say, I use the horn more in Vortex than anywhere else. Uh, but I, if you have Cinerel, the organ pipe is so good for him. Because his uh, heals are based on attack and then he's boosting his own damage and any other ranged heroes. So I really love this artifact for him. 
But this new artifact of Season 3 is amazing for anyone that does damage and needs accuracy. It's just such a good epic artifact. I really, really love it. For survivability's sake, I've been using the defense aura most times from Ardreth. And yeah, most people should have Ardreth because of the last event from Season 2. So let's let this roll. Again, this is a team that's not full of crazy damage dealers, except Sigrid. A rare. She's the main DPS of this team. To be fair, she could be the main DPS of most every team, <laughs> if she wanted to be. And yeah, as you can see, my core heroes that I started out working with this season were Cinerelle, Ardreth. Um, they're kind of in every team. There's like one team maybe that has Garius instead of Ardreth, but I didn't even build Garius until... A few days ago, I think, dog, actually. <laughs> but I just kind of wanted to show you guys my team. So Tempest Domain, it's not too hard, honestly. Once you get the right elements. And you really do need to deal with the, the Dragonlings. So if you wanted to do any timings, you would, you would have to do so with this. And with the recharge penalty of someone like Rose being in the team... It does affect your timings to be a little bit different, so it's more like 21 seconds, I think, or 21.5. But look at how much, how quickly we're taking this boss out. Like, now that we actually have some levels on these heroes, and I just want to be clear, I already beat these when they were level 70, before everything turned level 90, so. Before I got to 5 star, well, not 90, uh, I, before everything turned 5 star, I already beat this, so. Not too bad. Not, this is why it's going quicker, though. But it's still the same team. Again, I didn't change the gear. All I ha These heroes do have higher levels, except for Gum. Because I didn't bother taking him to 5-star yet, because I don't think I need to, because I'm only using him here at the moment. I might use him in Fey Meander as a crowd controller, because he's really good for it. But see, there we go. Boom. Look at the control on those guys. It really helps. And hopefully we get some good timing with AoE, but even if we don't, it's okay. As long as we kill most of them, it seems to be pretty quick still. Like, see, I didn't kill all of them. There were still two, but it really didn't do that much damage in the end. Not for this team now. All right. And there's Tempest Domain done. So another easy one. Not too shabby at all. All right, and then let's go to the hard one. So this one is my OP team, but I really wanted to make a video on it anyway, but I figured I might as well just do a video showcasing all of them at the same time. All right, and lineup recommendations for Tempest Domain. You can see a lot of the same heroes, of course, are going to be used. I love seeing people using the Bride and the Groom. They're so cool. Adolphus is great as well. Sigrid is great just everywhere. <laughs> But yeah, this I'm, I'm surprised not seeing more crowd control. And people just smashed and kind of ignored the crowd control aspect. That's really interesting. So it shows you can get away with ignoring that. So maybe I was wrong. I kind of felt like you couldn't ignore it, but maybe you can. But here's the non-legendary lineups. We got Garius, Sigrid, uh, Voresh. Obviously, he has knock up and knock back and stun. He's pretty good for that as well because uh even though he doesn't hit all of them he'll hit at least i think he hits three or four of them right so that's pretty good a lot of the same people that you're going to use in many areas of the game if you have a, an elminster you'll probably use elminster instead of adolphus but adolphus is really really good honestly he's probably going to get forgotten about but i'm happy to see him in these domain vibes already Let's go into the Flame Domain. So, Flame Domain is the evil one. We all know how this goes, right? Alright, so as they recommend, debuff blocking or dispelling is the most important. Obviously, the Flame Domain here, she puts up a ton of burns. That's what this is all about. You want to prevent the burns, remove the burns, whatever. And you want to spread your heroes out so they're not next to each other. Because burn does damage to enemy and adjacent tiles that's a lot of people's mistake is they just put their people in wherever clump them together for whatever reason uh and they don't realize you have to spread out your heroes and it makes a huge difference so we have this um the change for season three 
is that when the blast happens, it's triggered two times. This is where the difficulty ramps up, and I wish they didn't add it. It was really hard to do this, uh, honestly, really hard. Just like most immune control effects, but yeah, burn, burn, and then consumes all burn, triggering it, boom, big blast at the end. But this is what's different, guys. This season three, triggering a blast two times is rough. But I want to show you guys my unkillable team because why the hell not? Like, I was going to make a video just separately on this, like I said, but it didn't really, I don't think it needed its own video. So this worked before I made everybody five star as well when they were just level 90, just like all the others. And one thing that's really special here with the unkillable, if you had these heroes, um, by the one I just got Zephy to inspiration one like yesterday, I had no influence on this battle beforehand but Zephy here 45 percent dungeon our defense in all dungeon battles so Zephy's aura is amazing uh her equipment plan our equipment plan here is pretty solid i did do this without this set on our draft i just added i added the legendary gear i got to this yesterday thinking it would make my time just a little bit faster but i did do this flame domain 5 with the unkillable team with no legendary gear and uh, definitely i don't have this runes i think i only had blue or purple runes as well so keep that in mind but yeah zephy or an ogok need to be in something to speed them up because otherwise we can't get the timings we need so I actually did throw some timings. I wanted to keep Zephy and Ogak on an 18 second rotation for the boss, but I want to make sure they're spread out. So she is at 11.6 and then he starts at 17.5 because like she has a nexus that will allow invincibility for eight seconds that nexus is up and his is only for five seconds and then he heals and cleanses. So sometimes it didn't time properly, and I have to tell you, this did not work for me 100% of the time, but now it seems to be consistent. So the difference here, I probably should mention for any of the runs, if you want to speed up your time, just pick your damage dealer, Sigrid, and then just use a consumable that's like poison damage plus attack, you know, like this could speed up the run, boom, just make Sigrid do more damage. Or sorry, um, Oster is actually my main DPS in this run. <laughs> totally forgot. But yeah, like, again, I was using Oster as the main DPS and I was not using legendary gear until, like, yesterday. So I was able to farm this without that, but that is what I have to have on people now. I don't want to undo it and probably mess it up. But yeah, anyone that's not of the synergy, like, obviously right now you really do want to have the DPS be part of whatever your synergy is. And this poison and ice right now with having uh, Ogak, Sigrid, plus... Oster was a pretty solid mix, and I'm using Oster. I'm just trying to find someone that you're using in other teams is kind of the key. Uh, I like I was using Oster and Drist in my Goblin team because I knew they'd be amazing, and if I built them, I could use them in other areas like Flame Domain as a main DPS or something else, or you know, Fame Meander, Pillar of Trial. Definitely going to be using my Oster and my Drist again, so they were solid builds, and I didn't want to, you know build up random people that were just part of a synergy that you know we're not going to be used in multiple areas of the game so that's kind of key i think early on is trying to find pick your most op people that's what you should do that can carry you in multiple areas because again this is day 13 only all right now we're at the boss here and you're gonna see the rotation be pretty solid um hopefully <laughs> I should say. All right, there Zephy is going. Then we're going to have eight seconds of no issue here. If we get smacked, we get smacked. We'll have invincibility. It's fine. And then Ogak is going to go put up the immortality. And the boss is going to burn, but then he's going to cleanse it anyway. Oh, it's just a little bit off. This is a weird one. So sometimes the timing is better than others. So this is a rough one. This is one where the burns actually are staying on. But because of Zephy being timed at the end, it's okay. This is 
about stretching them out so they can cover the basis really well. Ogak and Zephy, I mean. Because you can't guarantee every time you get to the boss, you're going to be at the exact same point. I am going to point out one other hero to use that's extremely valuable for the Flame Domain. Um, actually, I'll point out a few others in general right after this as well. Easy clap. Even though the timings are kind of weird, we're not using Ogok at an ideal position for the boss or Zephy, but they're covering the time gaps good enough. You can actually get away with using your unkillable heroes here, and it doesn't have to be the crazy timings where Zephy has to be awake in five to get it to to be able to get the crazy crazy fast battle skill or whatever. She would, or is it just the ultimate? I can't remember. Her her skill haste goes up with her. Um, Awaken 5, which is really cool. But yeah, there's my team there. It's fun. It is a unkillable team, sort of. But it's not perfect, and it did fail for me. It took me tweaking it a little bit. Adjusting some timings, and I think just getting a little bit more damage on my people to where we blasted through the waves a little bit quicker for maybe more consistency. All right, when it comes to lineup recommendations for the Flame Domain, you can see Thea used here. She is a very strong um very very good for this she brings the invisibility and debuff immunity and it's all for ranged heroes so you just have like our dreath or someone else um with some resistance and you're good to go and yeah even if they're the bad affinity you can still get away with it like i did and here she is a top tier option even in stage five you're gonna see cleansers again ogak just as a cleanser is great uh, you could have Nathaniel in here for his help as well. He's got Dispelling here, um, but he's he's really good for um, Dispelling 1 debuff at least. We have, let's see, who else are people using? Obviously, Gulend is a king of everything. He's so, so good. He does everything, dispels all debuffs and heals all allies and puts attack penalty and does damage. And, he, and he's just oh, he's so good. So good. Vkook is another great option if you need a cleanser. You're going to want to run a couple cleansers. And I don't know that there's going to be any examples of it, but let's see. Is anybody using Fitz? Probably not at this point of the season. So in season one, you're going to see people using um, the rare tank Fitz, probably. But this is not legendary options. Obviously, at this point, most people are just going to have other people they're building and probably not need to build a Fitz. But he is a necrotic tank that's rare. And you can definitely use him as well with resistance. And he'll take everybody's debuffs off them. So here's the non-legendary lineups, guys. No legendaries, flame domain. Here are some options from my... From what's showing when I look on my server. It's usually mixed, but yeah. I wanted to show these two. Alright guys, well hope this video was helpful. Uh, I really want to showcase my teams and not always just try to do what's budget friendly aka no legendaries because I want you guys to see what we're really using and that's realistic and that helps you know who is worth building in the future. Also, please bear in mind I am still dealing with this face, re this face issue and being on the PC is really hard for me and I really can't take time on the test server to go make um, a rare and epic only and no legendary artifact team just for shits and giggles. I just can't do that right now. I'm sorry. I just am physically unable. It's really hard to get the recordings done as it is. So hope you guys understand. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. And if you haven't already, be sure to download Dragon or Silent Gods now using the link in the description or the pinned comment. It's available on Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, and Epic Games.